Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. Do us a favor, find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop into it. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on memory. Um, it, it's not too crazy for the, uh, the R330. It's um, a DDR4-based machine. There are four DIMM slots inside. Uh, there are two DIMMs per memory channel. Uh, it takes a number of different sizes. It takes uh, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or Believe it or not, 32 gig, but there's some uh, special details that we'll get to with that as well. It takes a number of different speeds, 2133, 2400, or 2666. But I will note that with 2666, it will clock down to 2400 speed if you're using a V6 proc, and it will clock down to 2133 if you're using a uh, V5 proc. And that just as a whole, whether you're using 2400 or 26 DIMMs, if you're using a V5, it will clock down to 2133. So just know that going into it, okay? Um, the different types of RAM that it takes, it'll take ECCM buffered. So with uh, the sizes uh, that we had mentioned earlier, you can take uh, uh, really 16, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig. That's what really people are using with these. With the 32 gigs, however, um, you can only put two of them in the machine. So the max that you can get in this machine is 64 gigs at 2400 speed using four 16s or two 32 gigs, your choice. Unfortunately, we tried a bunch of different ways to try to get four uh, 32 gigs to work. Uh, tried doing, make sure we had updated BIOS, uh, trying to make sure that we had uh, the latest V6 proc in there. Uh, we tried everything that we could to get it to work and it, two 32 gigs would work, which uh, you know is good, I guess, but uh, realistically, you can probably get a better deal on four 16 gigs. So that's kind of what I'm viewing as the, uh, the sweet spot as a whole uh, for the R330. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the RAM as a whole, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install uh, the DIMMs and show you how to max it out. Um, so let's hop in. All right, one of the things I wanted to mention is make sure that you have your ESD gear on. You might see I'm wearing my gloves and my jackets. One of the things I do recommend whenever you're inside a machine, always best to protect the DIMMs and protect the machine itself, okay? So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop the top, and we are in. So you will notice there's an air baffle that is over the CPU in the four DIMM slots. We're just gonna lift it straight up. And now we have access to the CPU and the four DIMM slots. Um, the, you'll notice that there are uh, two memory channels and each memory channel has two DIMMs per channel. And you can tell that by the white and the black color code. So white is the start of the channel. So this is A1, A2, A3, A4. So if you were only installing two DIMMs, you'd want to put it in the two white DIMM slots, leaving the two black empty. People ask us, well, why do we do that? Uh, it's really simple. You just want to have a nice even balance across all of your memory channels so you don't, don't overload one channel and the other channel is not doing anything for you. You have them both doing even work for you. But personally, I recommend putting in four 16 gigs, max it out, and have a nice even distribution across all of your DIMM slots. Uh, to me, that is the uh, best configuration. Now I say that, but I'm about to load in four 8 gigs because we're building this for a local customer and that's what they want. So we're going to do what our customers want. So uh, let's go ahead and show you how to install these. Um, so first thing I wanted to note, right here you will notice there's a notch. This notch is known as a key. Uh, this key right here along the leads is not perfectly centered. It's off just a little bit. So you have to make sure you line everything up properly because if you don't, you could bust the, uh, the leads on the dim breaking the dim, or you could damage the dim slot, which means you might have to replace the motherboard, and neither of these are a problem that you want to run into. Um, it's one of the things that we see all, all, far too often, unfortunately, so I always tell people to be extra safe. The other common problem we see, which I'll show you in a minute here, is people don't fully seat the modules all the time. They think it's seated, but it's not perfectly seated, and that's a super common problem as well. So those are two things we always tell people to be careful with and uh, to just to watch out for because they're uh, an easy user error, and I don't care if you've been doing this for 20 years or if this is your first day in the data center anyone can do it I've done it on camera for crying out loud it's an easy problem all right so let's make sure everything's lined up properly and we're going to come over here to a1 and you're going to want to hear these two clicks right here now those two clicks that's how you know and I'm going to push these blacks out too so you see how much uh, further in this is and it's fully seated that's how you know that the uh, the module is completely in there the, the the tabs will actually hook into the side of the module and pull it down and make sure the leads are fully 
uh, seated into the dim slot and that's really important because if it's off even just like that right there it might not look like a ton but that little bit uh, is the difference of this module being fully seated and being recognized or it's saying that there's an error so uh, just a little little piece like that we always tell people just to double check rotate your modules around if you think you have a bad module uh, but that's the easiest way to, to find it so all right now we're going to go ahead and go to a2 line everything up properly you're going to hear click click we're going to come over here to A3. And again, if you're only putting in two, this is how you do it right here. The two white dim slots. Now, like I said, I recommend putting it in all four. Uh, it's a four dim slot machine, so there's not a ton of dims that you can put in there, so you might as well get the most out of it, okay? All right, nice and simple. So really, this is a, a quick upgrade. It doesn't take a, a ton of effort with videos like this. You can uh, easily accomplish this if you're worried at home and you just put your uh, air baffle right back on, make sure it's perfectly flush and voila, you're done. You've upgraded your machine. Uh, we only put in 32 gigs, but again, you can get up to 64 uh, via four 16 gigs or two 32 gigs, whatever your preferred configuration is, okay? And well, I appreciate you stopping by. If you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers yourself, we custom build Dell, HPE, Super Micro, IBM, Cisco, you name it. We'll do uh, our own uh, white box builds uh, for new Gigabyte, new uh, ASRock, uh, new tie-in, you name it. And we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center's business or your home lab. So please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And thanks again for stopping by, guys. Take care.